Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The Power Conference Division and Conference winners. Conference Championship winners. And we're going to make our picks for playoffs and New Year's Six teams. Awesome. So, let's go on and jump right into this. Uh, first thing, Big Ten. Big Ten was the uh, the best regular season team last year. And we saw an unexpected Big Ten championship game. I don't know if it will be as unexpected this year. It, it might be for you. For me, I didn't see any way that it would be. Um, I'm going to give you mine. My Eastern Division champion is going to be Ohio State. They've got... At, they almost won it last year. They got into the playoff with um, with freshmen, a lot of freshmen. This year, those freshmen are experienced, and they won a lot. They got a bunch of talent. You're not going to find a team other than Alabama in the country that has more talent than that team. So I think Ohio State wins that division, not to mention they've got Penn State at home this year. Like I think they've got that. I think the West is going to be Wisconsin. Wisconsin schedule sets up better. Uh, Ohio State drops off of it. They pick up a, a much lesser team. Um, yeah, I think Wisconsin's still going to be really good. Like, they returned most of their team that went 10-3 and three last year, and, I mean, that was a hell of a team last year. Who you got? Got Wisconsin winning the West as well. I, I think they're going to run away with that side. It's not nearly as difficult as the East. I have Michigan. I've, I've made it abundantly clear on this podcast I'm a believer in Jim Harbaugh. Okay. And I am not a fan of Ohio State. In I, any way, shape, form, or fashion, I don't respect Urban Meyer as an individual at all. Just as a person. I, I don't care for him as a person. I do think that he is a hell of a coach. Here's what I like about Harbaugh. Everywhere Harbaugh has been, he goes into a conference, whether it be in the NFL or in college, when he was at Stanford, and he picks the biggest bully in the room, and he says, I'm going to shut that guy up. Well, he hasn't been able to do it yet. Oh, and he well, had, no. He had, All right, last year. Last year was his first year. Second year. It was his first. All right, okay. Yeah, but that was, he's got to have some talent. That Brady Hope team that he took over for was awful. Well. Awful. And here's the thing. I think they've got more talent than they did. I don't think they've got as much talent as Ohio State. And no. I do think that the fact that they only returned five starters – do you think he had more talent than Pete Carroll when he was at USC, when he was at Stanford? No, but I think the and USC overlooked. And he beat overlooked. the hell out of Pete Carroll on a regular basis, correct? Well, eventually he did. I think he started to have a lot of talent. I mean, my God, he, he, had, he, had he wasn't Andrew at Stanford Luck and, very long. No, he did uh, like over so, four yeah, years. It but took he, him, yeah, it took him like two or three years to get there. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm looking for Harbaugh to make that big Harbaugh leap. He's the most competitive I don't know. man I've ever listened to, talked to, followed. I'm with you on that. I don't know that I'm ready to crown him yet. I'll crown him. I think it's JT Barrett's last season. Like when Ohio State yeah, is he not was, returning. He was real good last year, right? Well, towards the end of the season, yeah, he dropped off. Yeah, but that I guy mean, was garbage. He, yeah, he was definitely garbage. But I think, I think they come back. The schedule sets up nice for him. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, okay. So they get a lot of these teams at home, but. They still have to play Penn State. They still have to play Michigan. I mean, they still have a tough road ahead of them. Well, Michigan has to play at Penn State, too, and they play Ohio State at home. So, I mean, all of them swap it off. That's right. But, That's right. yeah. So, I, I still think it'll be Ohio State. You know you know who could surprise everybody? Like, we've got Michigan and Ohio State. Penn State won it last year. Well, that's it. They return almost everybody. In my opinion, I actually think Ohio State comes in third of that conference. And I don't, that's not a knock on Ohio State. I think Michigan is really good. I believe in John Harbaugh, and Penn State is really, really good. And Jim I'm Harbaugh. Really, Jim Harbaugh. Yes, <laughs> sorry, I really hate John Harbaugh, and and I and I believe James Franklin is a great coach. I agree, and I respect the hell out of him. It, they are a top heavy conference. Very to say much that so. they'll finish third sounds insulting, but but damn. I mean, yeah, if you if you come you got with, Harbaugh, Franklin, and Urban, Urban Meyer, and you're talking about Penn in the same State, division, Michigan, and Ohio State. You're, you're three historic programs. Somebody's going to come in first. Somebody's going to come in second. Somebody's going to come in third. Yeah, that's the way it goes. And it doesn't mean that any of them are bad. Which how off kilter? Like that 
that conference is as off kilter right now. That's as, the deepest as conference the, in all of football. And well, it as, looks to be in, for the next five, ten years, as long as those guys stay there. It is the most off balanced conference. Oh, oh, as, yeah. as far as like the SEC also, because the SEC West has just run away with things, right? Yes. The Big Ten East. With Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State, when the, they are good, like the it doesn't matter is, what everybody else. Does. I agree with that to an extent. I actually think that Wisconsin could beat any of those three teams in a one-game championship playoffs. Wisconsin has a better chance to beat any of those three teams than any of the East teams have to beat Alabama or LSU. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right on that. I we have we, spent five and a half minutes <laughs> talking about the Big Ten. <laughs> well, it's because we're picking winners, and that is the one conference that has the most possibilities of the most Yeah, the most winners. competition. Because you're talking about three guys on one side of the aisle. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I right, agree. Pac-12. Right. Yeah, tell me who you got in the Pac-12. Pac-12, I got USC. I think this is the easiest road to the Final Four in the country. I really? Think, I think USC is light years better than everybody else in the Pac-12. I think you are And in the South, I think they are light years better than everybody else. And I don't know that anybody's going to give them a run for their money at all. I've got USC as well. I've got Washington in the North. I got Washington in the North also. But I don't think Washington's going to be as good as they were last year. No, they lost a lot on defense. And their defense is what really made them, like it set them apart. Really set them apart. And but I do think that you know with Chris Peterson he knows what he's doing he's a hell of a coach yep. hell of a coach oh, always has completely been. agree and he knows what he's doing especially with the returning quarterback Jake Browning was you know nothing to bat an eye at last year like he's awesome and this year what he's a junior I think he was a sophomore last year mm-hmm. so you know you get him one more year under that belt and I mean the guy especially in that in that league. So, however, I don't think Washington has what it takes to beat USC. No, not even not a close. Chance. We're just two two different class of teams right now with what USC has returning. Yeah, yeah. All right, Big Twelve. Let's move on to that. We only Back. need one guy. They don't have a conference championship. They don't yeah. have an East and one West, guy. North and South. And you and I, ours is coming down to Bedlam. It looks like it because uh, here's the thing. I don't. We'll talk about this in a little bit. I don't get why this game was moved to November fourth. Yeah, this should be the last game of the season. Like it should, at least according to Vegas, it is on November fourth. I do want to check and see. Uh, give me your reasons why Oklahoma State is going to beat Oklahoma for. Well, the you're big, you're the working on the assumption that that's going to be my second Big Twelve team. I think TCU would be my second team that I was picking. All right, well, tell me this: why, why do you have Oklahoma State winning? The conference championship. I like Mike Gundy. They've been really close the last couple of years. They're turning a quarterback, don't they? Yeah, and I, I just think it, the league sets up for them to win this year. I think Bob Stoops stepping down is going to be a factor, and you can't ignore it. You can't deny it. And and well, so, they they get TCU at home. They have to play at yes, Texas, and that's and that's it. They they, they got to play at, at um they got to play at West Virginia. At I, Iowa State, like they they get Kansas State at home, they get Oklahoma at home, they get uh, let's see, they get Baylor at home, like their their road games are not bad. No, not bad at all. You, you know what's interesting about their schedule? They play at South Alabama early. Like yeah. what in the hell? I, I, they're I, probably wanting to recruit in Mobile. I was just about to say they want to get some recruiting in Alabama. Yeah, it just. It's, this is they got the two road teams. games non conference. They play at Pittsburgh and they play at South Alabama. Well, Pittsburgh's a legit team. They could probably lose that Pittsburgh game. Yeah. Yeah, I think they could. But I, I like them to win, and my other team would have been TCU. I, I think they're going to be really good this year, and I think Oklahoma's going to be down. I I think Oklahoma, at least for this season, they've got a bunch of starters back, a bunch of seniors, guys that will keep the ship rolling regardless of what's going on. I think the decline for Lincoln Riley will be next year. I, I don't th- and and I think he is an outstanding coach. I think if he had taken the Memphis job instead of Mike Norvell, I think he would have been fire here. I think anywhere that he had gone other than following a legend, he would have been fine. Following a legend at a place where they are having some personnel problems with athletes on the field. Yeah, where where there's discipline issues all around the program. Yeah. That's a problem. So, he is going to be there's going to be a lot of pressure there. And I think the first year 
like when you got this many guys back and whatnot, and and when it wasn't a full off season without Bob Stoops, I think they're going to be fine. I guess my problem with that is is the same thing that I said last year with Kirby Smart. He, there are going to come scenarios where he's going to have to make head coaching decisions his first year, where he's just going to make a mistake. I think he's he, going to get out coached because he's going to make a mistake in every game somewhere. And some of those times, it's going to cost his team games. Well, he, and some he, of had to, not. he had to replace a quarterback. He, he brought in a true freshman to play quarterback. And when you're Nick Saban, that's fine. When you're Kirby Smart, starting over at a brand-new program, maybe not so much. No, but that, that we're having a different conversation. He, re, he brought in a, a quarterback that was, without question, better than anybody else on the roster to play quarterback. Yeah, I agree so, with I that. mean, it's it's not it's not like there was a quarterback competition, and he went with the young guy over the veteran. That's a, yeah, you got a point there. I mean, Jacob Eaton is, is unbelievably talented and light years better than anybody else on the roster. Yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, Eason is definitely he. Yeah, so, they, now of course they've got a kid now, Jake uh, Jake from F O or F R O M M, like he is. That kid's unbelievable. Well, that's probably because they feel like Easton's going to end up in the draft next year. And that's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, I think that they could end up redshirting this. Not kid. this coming draft. The one after. The one after that, yeah, because after he, his third year, he's you got it. He's probably going to be a, a top five pick. Speaking of Mark Rick, let's go ahead and jump into. Um, let's jump into the ACC. Okay. Let's do that because we got off on a tangent there talking about coaching and whatnot. Yeah, new yeah, guys yeah. and all, all right. that good stuff. Uh, who you got in the Atlantic? So I said earlier, Atlantic, I meant Coastal, Miami, was my team. I, I've got them winning that. Okay, yeah, I've, I've got Miami on the Coastal. As my Atlantic team, this is probably my biggest. I, I think the Coastal may be one of the easiest yes. divisions. Uh, yeah, that's going to be up there with probably Wisconsin and with USC as the easiest division to win. Easiest division to win. The Atlantic, I'm going with Louisville. And I know that that's probably a major wild card, but if it's July 2nd and I have to make a decision tonight. Well, look, look at this. I'm going with the best quarterback in the conference. I'm going with the best quarterback coach and offensive coach in the conference. I and look I at, think he's poised to win. I think that Florida State got embarrassed by them last year. That 11 a.m. game they at Louisville. They absolutely did, too. And Petrino – Kept talking crap after the game. Oh, man, you know, we should have hung 100, 100 on, them, on them. That's right. You know, and, and that, I mean, you got to be careful what you say about programs like but that. But you say that, Florida State's a great program. They are a pedigreed program that you don't normally do that to. Well, remember, they were they were missing Derman James last year at that point. They were losing, like, they, they lost several guys for that game. And it was a complete game changer because those are positions – where it matters against guys like Lamar Jackson. I, I just – you got to stop them. You can talk all the noise you want, but if you can't stop them, you can't shut them up. Yeah. Now, you're, you're right. And that's, you're right. I, I know that I'm going out on a limb there. I absolutely know that that's not the popular pick and that's not the Vegas pick. But but Louisville wasn't exactly the popular pick last year either. And I mean, you saw what they did to start off with. I like, I like Petrino. His offenses are really, really good, and I love – Lamar Jackson. Okay. I love him. Okay. Um, I've got Florida State. I think I think Florida State's going to be great. I think they've got the most talent of anybody in the country oh, aside a, from Ohio right State pick. and Alabama. That's a smart pick. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I look at it from talent perspective, mm -hmm. you know, like talent and experience. Oh, and Florida and Jimbo, State has experience. And, Jimbo is yeah, way and more got experienced coach than, than Petrino. No, uh, all of all – I don't know if he's more experienced than Petrino. Petrino's been around a lot longer than Jimbo. But we're talking about but, winning. Yeah, as far as winning – Yes. That's what we're okay. That's one of them has an national championship. The other one. I'm not talking about how long they've coached for, but Petrino had a whole lot of years in the Conference USA. Nobody cares. That's yeah. Nobody you're cares right. about what you did then. And he did well in the SEC, but he never won a championship. No. So never beat Saban. You know. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's uh, let's check out the AAC before we jump into the playoff and the New Year's Six Bowls. So in the AAC, let's let's start off with the East first. Well, the East. I have South Florida. I think we've got the exact same matchup. Probably. I, I have Memphis for the West. I've got Memphis for the I went, West as I went well. local. Uh, USF, I think, 
has got enough talent left over from Willie Taggart. I think Charlie Strong is a great say, coach. They didn't they didn't replace Willie Taggart with a bum. No. I mean, no. Charlie Strong is is a hell of a football coach. Especially in a conference like this. Yes. He's he does not belong. In this conference, he is he is he's the guy that doesn't belong. He's yes. way better than this. Yeah. But he does have a lot of talent coming back. You know, at South Florida's offense and defense are both loaded. They've got one of the easiest schedules. So who do you have? You have Memphis winning this game. We talked about that. I got yesterday. Memphis winning this game because I think Memphis has a better quarterback, See, and I, I think that their defense is a little bit better than it was last year. When we get into the New Year's Six Bowls, you've got Memphis as the at large. You talked yes. about that. I've got Memphis going podcast. twelve and one. I've got USF going probably eleven and one ish. I I see them losing a game somewhere. It won't be to a non conference team. No. Because their non-conference schedule There's is nothing. jack crap. Yeah, they'll get beat by that one of these big offensive schools that are that just have a good game. Yeah, it'll they, be they, something quick. Because remember, this team went ten and two last year, but right. they they missed out because they lost to Temple. That's it. You know, like that's. I have them being my at large game. I think this game's going to determine it. The winner of Memphis and South, South Florida, if this is what we end up seeing, um, so. I'm with you. The South Florida schedule for those that are curious. At San Jose State, Stony Brook at UConn, Illinois at home on a Friday, Temple at home on Thursday, at East Carolina, UMass, at Tulane, Cincinnati at home, Houston at home, Tulsa at home, at Central Florida. See, that Tulsa game, I know it's at home, but that's the game. And then Central Florida. Don't don't sleep on Florida. Don't sleep on Central Florida. Um, Houston, I mean, they maybe – Maybe maybe Luke Fickle at Cincinnati comes up with something. Uh, Temple I, on a Thursday after Cincinnati, you play Illinois. I think Cincinnati's going to have to take some time to get better. Like I, I, Temple might be better than we give them credit for because they've got a good team coming back. Uh, they they don't have a bunch of starters coming back, but that's already like a program that that's had the a, foundation built. And Jeff Collins. Tough, I was going to say that's a tough team. Yeah, and and turning around, you only got six days rest. You know, you go from playing Illinois on Friday, which you want to win, as you know we're going to beat a Big Ten team. Mm-hmm. To turning around and having to play Temple on Thursday, but the issue is you got them both at home. Yeah, at like they, they'll be eleven and one, maybe twelve and zero. Yeah, I could see I could see them being a really good team. They're my at large team getting into the New Year's. So, and in the last episode, we went over uh, we went over to Memphis's schedule, and I I'm just I've got a feeling about this Memphis team. I think Norvell is one of those young coaches that special. is yeah he is special. He really is. special. You know, he turned that team around again last year. And, you know, normally when smaller teams lose a first-round quarterback like Paxton Lynch, who is like the school leader, like record leader in every category. They just fall off. They fall off. And he turned around and brought in Riley Ferguson and went 8-4. and four. And, I mean, it was the same thing that, that Memphis did in Fuentes last season. You know, he – I think he has got this thing absolutely rolling. He has upgraded the talent there, and they are the sixth most experienced team in the country. Athletic director better be getting the resumes ready. Oh, I agree with that. I think he's it, like even if he goes ten and two, nine and three, I think he's gone. Yeah, I think he's out of here. Somebody's going to pay him a lot of money. And there are going to be a lot of jobs open. Yeah, you got that right. All right, let's move into the uh, the college football playoff and the New Year's Six bowls. Uh, let's you know, let's do the New Year's Six first. Okay. Or you know what? Well, yeah, let's do that because y- your Final Four is <laughs> interesting, to say All the right. least. All right, so let's jump into, uh, let's do the Cotton Bowl first. December 29th, the Cotton Bowl, uh, the first of the big games. I think that's on a Thursday night, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I I mean... <laughs> we are, it is July 2nd, and we are let's, trying let's to figure give this give you, stuff out. Let's give you what Phil Steele has first. All okay. right, so Cotton Bowl, Phil Steele has Washington and South Florida. Orange Bowl, he's got Clemson and Wisconsin. Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma and Penn State. Peach Bowl, Florida and Miami. The Rose Bowl, Final Four, he's got Ohio State against Florida State. This number two versus number three. Sugar Bowl, he's got Alabama versus USC. And that's one versus four. Now, so I didn't do any of my final four games, Rose Bowl, Sugar Bowl. I just put the final four teams in. I don't know how they're going to be seated, and I don't know where they're going to play. Who do you think is going to be the number one overall seed? USC. 
because I think they're going to go undefeated. Okay. I don't think they're going to lose a game. And and even though their schedule may not be as tough as everybody else's, I mean, although they they've got big big like name games, yeah, because they play Texas and Notre Dame Notre this year. Dame, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. No. They're going to go undefeated, and I think they're going to be the only undefeated team in there. All right, now give me what's your Cotton Bowl matchup? My Cotton Bowl matchup is one of the most historic football games of all time. Last year we had Alabama and Ohio State, and that was pretty historic, right? Right. This year I've got. Bama, and Penn State. All right. For the Cotton Bowl, I've got Penn State and Memphis. Okay, that's not nearly as historic. Not nearly as historic. <laughs> that is not nearly as historic. That, no, nobody really cares about that. <laughs> no, that would be a bad that, That'll national, be a Wisconsin. That'll be a bad national TV game. Yes, that, that will be Wisconsin-Western Michigan. Yes. <laughs> yes that's so that's all that'll be. Um, let, all right, so tell me Orange Bowl. My Orange Bowl, I got Miami getting to stay at home against Wisconsin. Now, I've also – well, no, I don't have Wisconsin in that one. My apologies. Um, I've got Clemson and LSU. Oh, okay. Yeah, Phil still had Wisconsin in that one. But you've got Wisconsin and Miami. Yep. Not a big believer in Clemson. Not a, I, we already talked about this. We talked but about yeah. that, yeah. I think, yeah. I think they're going to be down. I think they fall off a little bit. I think Deshaun Watson was pretty special. And you can't lose a guy like that and just put a freshman in there and say, go at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Fiesta Bowl, I've got Oklahoma and Washington. Like, I don't think Washington is going to be, like, national championship worthy. Uh, and I don't think Oklahoma will either. I think Oklahoma's going to go on the road and get whooped by Ohio State. And that's going to put, you know, that's going to be a problem for them. So, Fiesta Bowl for me, I have Florida State and Oklahoma State. That'd be a pretty good matchup. I actually think that'd you remember, be a really fun game to, to You remember watch. when they opened up the season uh, a few years ago with Jameis Winston against those guys? And yeah. it was, I, I think it came down to like a last minute touchdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think that'd be a really fun game to watch. Okay. And then my Peach Bowl would probably be a little bit of a letdown national TV wise. But I, I really like South Carolina this year. I think if they finish 9 and 3, losing the SEC championship game, I think they make a Peach Bowl. And. I like South Florida to be my at-large team, and they're going to go to Atlanta. I'm completely different there. I got Georgia and Wisconsin. I got Georgia at 10-2. and two. I've got Florida winning the East. We went over that in the last episode. I've got Georgia here at 10-2. and two. I've got Wisconsin, and they'll probably be 10-3 and three like they were last year. Something like that. And, I mean, I, I think that Paul Christ will do the same thing Every year at Wisconsin. He could. He like, absolutely I think, could. I think he'll go 10-2 and two and then lose in the conference championship. And every now and then, like, he could do like Brett Bielema and sneak up and win one every now and then. Yeah. But. I think that's all you have to do, though. Yeah, that's all you need to do at Wisconsin. Yeah. That's all you need to do. All right, let's talk about the uh, the Final Four. Like, mine is the more traditional, like. You went I'm, a little more chalk than I yeah, did. Yeah, I went way no chalk doubt. on this. No but, but that's normally what happens, you know. I mean, think about last year's. Like, Washington was not the chalk. But, I mean, who are you going to take? Like, Oklahoma well, or Washington? But we all will agree, though, that the Ohio State, there was there was some shenanigans with Ohio State getting in. Yeah. And then it showed that they didn't deserve to be in. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going with who I think the four best teams are going to be with their best resumes, not who people want to watch on TV. Number one, I've got Alabama. Okay. I think they're 12-0. I think their win over Florida State is going to loom huge. I think it's going to be a rematch in the Sugar Bowl. I think it's Alabama and Florida State. I think Florida State is number four. I think the only other loss on their resume will be to Alabama. And then they get a chance at redemption in New Orleans. So that's my one versus four. My two versus three, I think USC is number two. And I think the reason that USC is number two, I think they'll be undefeated too. But I think people will not be able to get last year's Alabama game out of their head. Well, and if Alabama's undefeated two years in a row coming out of the SEC, they're going to be the number one seed. Especially with a win over Florida State. Yeah, that they're going to be the number one seed. Well, and the SEC is a way better conference than the Pac-12 this year. Agreed. Uh, but at number two, I've got USC, and then number three, I've got Ohio State. So I, I think Ohio State gets beat somewhere. I don't know where. But I think it'll well, be the conference about, like, is just too hard for them to to go undefeated. To go undefeated. I just don't think it, it'll happen this year. Yeah, I agree. But I think that they're you know I think that they will be the three seed, just because I don't think that anybody wants 
Alabama and Ohio State in the first round. I think they want to try and see either Alabama and USC or Alabama and Ohio State in the national championship game. Like, it's a ratings thing here. That's right. So, now, yours is interesting. Who's your four seed? Four seed is uh, is Florida State. Okay. We already went over that. So, one versus four, Alabama versus Florida State. Two versus three, USC against Ohio State. USC gets to play at home in the Rose Bowl. Alabama gets to play basically at home in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, And then, you know, they move on from there. So, my number one seed is USC because I think they'll go undefeated. Okay. This they, is where it gets crazy. This is where it gets a little crazy. If LSU finishes 11 and 1, they're, they're my, this is a homer pick. But if they finish 11 and 1, do you think that this committee would have an 11 and 1 SEC team, an 11 and 1 LSU, not an Alabama, over a 12 and 0 USC team? No. So I don't either. So I think there'll be the two. No, seed. they will not. Because LSU basically played nobody in their non conference. Like yeah, BYU I mean, they, schedule, they scheduled BYU and BYU fell off. Yeah. So you, yeah. All right. I mean, I think a win over Alabama would count for something. Oh yeah. But so USC would have a win over Washington and a win over. You know, and a lot of it depends on Stanford. how Florida finishes. Yeah. I mean, if, all, Florida, if Florida finishes, you know, seven and five, two, probably not good. Yeah. Nine and three, nine that'd be three, right. then that, Yeah, that helps. My number three team is Louisville. I think Louisville wins the ACC. I think they can finish ten and two, make them eleven and two. And I think you got to make them the three seed. Lamar Jackson, most exciting player to watch in football. So you, so LSU is the two seed. LSU, Louisville is the three. So you got a you got LSU, a, or a, a Citrus Bowl. Bowl rematch in the in the Sugar Bowl. In the Sugar Bowl. Wow. I think we got a lot of the same outcome though. I think you're probably right. And then my number four seed is Michigan. So the Rose, the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl is the Big Ten and the the, the, the Pac twelve. That's exactly and I think, right. I think Michigan's going to win that, but I've got them Michigan being the four seed because they don't come out of that conference unscathed. Now there's a chance if they come out ten and two and they finish eleven and two after their championship game, then they could end up with the three seed. I, you yeah. know what? I probably would think if they have the same record as Louisville, they're going to get the three seed. If they get in with a nine and three, ten and three after the championship game, man, there's a chance the committee might still have them as the three seed over. Yeah, you may be right. Louisville. But I think Florida State's really good. I think Miami's really good, and I think wins over those two programs for Louisville helps boost them. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I mean, wins over Clemson, wins over Florida State. You know, win over possibly a decent Kentucky team. You know, that's what I that what I love fun. about my Final Four is I have two of the best and most exciting quarterbacks in the game going up against two great defenses. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Huh. So. Very, very interesting. Untraditional. I didn't go chalk, but I went with it's July 2nd. We're trying to figure this stuff out. I'm looking at these teams. I like the coaches. I like the way the teams are built. And a lot of the reason why we're going through it this early is SEC Media Days is this week, and and we're not going to touch on SEC Media Days until next week. Yes, you know we, we'll we'll look at all the information that came out of there. We'll go over media picks and whatnot. We'll wait until it all comes out and then talk about it. Yeah, and then we'll talk about it, and it'll be fine. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First. Check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at ChrisBGiannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Tune in, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.